Hey guys, welcome to a little road reflection situation. Back in the old, back in the old car, got her, got her gassed up. Check, check the tire pressure. Had to do that today. Uh, I haven't done a, a a bit of a check-in episode in a while. I think the last real full check-in episode I did was, I don't know, a few months ago, maybe in like May or June or something like that. I can't even remember, but it was, uh, yeah, that, that was the time where I was getting a bunch of stress, stress migraines and shit and being laid out for a day. Uh, I wanted to do a, 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 you know, little check-in kind of mental healthy episode because it has been, it's been a month, uh, really, um, lost a friend, lost a pretty important venue, uh, you know, the, 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 I think some of you guys might know the situation with the cat. Everything's fine with the kitty now. Uh, he is back to, back to exploring and terrorizing the house. <laughs> He's not that bad. But he is, he is uh, getting into his fair share of trouble. Um, actually, right before I left, he was trying to, like, get out of the door uh, to come out onto the patio, and I was like, that's not gonna fucking happen, you're a house cat with one eye, uh, but I, this week, the, well, really the last two weeks, I should say, um, I have felt pretty uninspired and unmotivated to do anything, yeah, that's, that's kind of the gist of it, and I don't know if it has something to do with the weather or just the general sort of depression of the of of everything that's happening around me. But you know, it's like we can't go see our families for the holidays because of because uh, of the rise in cases, and the and that's going to continue to to happen. Um, you know, there was an opportunity brewing in terms of live performances in D.C. where I would be able to work out my show. Uh, you know, small audiences, 10 to 15 people kind of thing with uh, with a production company, a uh, very cool production company that was doing a lot of backyard shows in people's homes. So, the you know, a very cool way of operating it. And this might kind of be the way that uh, that certain performances come back into into the fold in 2021 you know basically what she was what what they uh, this person was doing was they they have a bunch of shows one one person productions so it would be a a performer plus the uh stage manager assistant what have you um them the people that you know have the house or the space or what have you and then personally invite, you know, 10 to 15 people. And it was at flat rate uh, or, you know, less rate plus donations, something along those lines. Um, but with the cases going up, you know, this became too much of a risk. And uh, just didn't just didn't want to, you know, t- take take the risk that uh, I would feel incredibly guilty if somebody caught COVID because they came to a show of mine. Uh, so, you know, that, that kind of fell by the wayside. So I think I've just been, it's, it's been a lot of hits this month, uh, despite it being a decent month, right? Like had a birthday, got to see a few people on my birthday, uh, had a really fun time. Um, you know, like things are, things are good. Things are okay. Still have my job, uh, this, the, the side gig that I've been doing so things are okay um, but I've just felt really uninspired, unmotivated and then that puts me into a kind of a, an anxiety trap this anxiety cycle where I do feel like I should be doing more I do feel like I should be producing more content, doing a lot more live streams um, this, that, and the third, right? Like I should be doing more virtual shows and I should be uh, talking about all of these things, but I just don't have like the energy or the motivation to do it. And, and, and that's part of that burnout. And I, and I, and I'd mentioned that before I'd mentioned that I'm pretty burnt out from my virtual shows, which take up a lot of work and a lot of time to do. And I needed a little bit of, 
um, time to recharge more or less and that's kind of what I'm taking but there's still like other stuff that needs to be done uh, since we're moving out of the studio that needs to be taken care of um, what like the ha- like our room needs to be put together I need to figure out like a home studio situation and then I took on another design gig to make extra money uh, because you know that's the capitalist society that we live in is is uh, is exactly that. Um, the shows were doing okay, but I still have bills that need to be covered. So uh, doing, you know, I, I, ideally what would work out, and this is another thing that I've kind of got to figure out in, in my state of burnout, is what is a good schedule um, between the side gig of watching this elderly lady, a design gig that I, you know, this, this regular design gig that I would have, plus... Uh, live streams, podcasts, and the virtual shows. What would be a well-rounded out schedule uh, where I can where I can balance a, a regular, you know, social life where I get to see and hang out with my friends and my girlfriend and the people that I care about, um, and and my professional life as far as whatever it is to keep up on top of bills. I don't know what that is, but I I will tell you this that. It is very difficult for me to take personal time off. Um, I have always kind of been that way. And I think that has led to, I mean, you know, I moved and we really didn't prioritize that enough. And that's partly on me because I didn't prioritize it enough. I still kept the same kind of schedule of, um, you know, half half of the week I'm, I'm pulling... Uh, 13, 14 hour days and I don't think my body fully recovered from that with the stress of all the other things that are going on around me um, so getting getting back into that is I, I, I don't have an answer to that yet <laughs> that is something that I need to think about but it but it put me to the point of stress to the point of like where where I am anxious and, and depressed about doing this stuff and and I, I will say the other the other part of it is uh, there is a lot of noise over the election and this election um, I, I honestly didn't think this election would be as toxic as it has been this this election has been far more toxic from from the start of it I think I faced a lot more aggression uh and I partly think that is based on uh, social media algorithms um, that churn conflict. That's what the algorithms like. Because when there's conflict, there's interaction. People stay on the site more. They are going to uh, gather more data about you when you are in that state, when you are using their site a lot more. Um, and I saw that firsthand, right? Uh, if, if you've been paying attention to this channel, you know that... The, my, my number one choice for the Democratic candidate was Tulsi Gabbard. Now, uh, has Tulsi Gabbard panned out to be what she was going to be? No. Um, Tulsi Gabbard, in fact, ended up being uh, quite a, a disappointment at the end of the day. But she is still... Uh, the values that she had put out there and kind of shed a light on onto the mainstream of... Uh, anti-military industrial complex, anti-imperialism. Um, let's look into what American imperialism is doing and this kind of, you know, America's the good guy. No matter what we do, it's because we're the good guys. Is like that narrative is bullshit. Um, and she basically, it was the same thing, right? She believed in Medicare for all. She believed in LGBTQ rights. Uh, she believed in worker rights. She believes in pardoning Julian Assange and Edward Snowden. That was another thing. She was the only person bringing that into conversation. Um, my support for her warranted a few people that wanted to have a conversation about why I liked her particularly, which was nice. Um, or and, and they might have disagreed with me. And they said, you know, I don't think we're going to see eye to eye. I'm going with Elizabeth Warren. I'm going with... Uh, Bernie Sanders, I'm going with Andrew Yang, I'm going with Marianne Williamson, so on and so forth, whatever it was. 
Um, but uh, in, in a lot of sense, I mean, I put out a, you know, uh, a video basically talking about the McCarthyism that um, that that we have seen. Uh, be, you know, specifically dealing with Tulsi Gabbard when she called Hillary Clinton the queen of the warmongers uh, and that whole, you know, debacle. And it brought out people from the woodwork that essentially called me, like, a cultist. And I was like, no, I'm supporting a candidate that, like, actually has values that I believe in um, and I think on a strategic note could pull votes away from Trump. Um, and they didn't want to hear it because of something that she might have said 10 years ago that she has apologized for. And and then there was, you know, when when she dropped, it was like, okay, Bernie Sanders has all, like, I've, I've liked Bernie Sanders quite a bit. And that became like a point of contention because then it was Biden versus Sanders because, oh, well, Sanders can't get anything done. And then the question really should be is why not? Why can't we get anything progressive done in this country? Oh, because Congress isn't set up that way. Well, don't you think we should have a better system then? So then it became an argument about the system. And then when when Bernie endorsed Biden, which was a massive disappointment, two things happened to me. I became very well aware that my goal has always been systemic change. And I believed that Bernie and Tulsi, and in some respects Andrew Yang, could have brought that systemic change. So. I never really faltered away from the need for systemic change. Other people whose goal was to get rid of Trump. Now, I've, I've mentioned this several times before, which is that uh, systemic change would be getting rid of Trump. When you, when you fight for systemic change, when you are looking to you know, put something completely different in place than what we have now, and you can do that in various different ways. Um, you are also battling to get Trump out of office. But to make this argument that you are for systemic change, henceforth you are also for Trump, doesn't fucking make sense when Trump is a symptom of this system. He is, he is the epitome of what this system will produce. But, to you know, I, I came out and said, no, I'm not voting for either of these corporate candidates. And people came out and said, well, you're voting for Trump then, which is asinine and a ridiculous statement. Now, I, I have pretty much since 2016 said no voter shame. I am not going to vote shame anybody because, I under, because, because I'm fighting for a better system. And this system has trapped you into picking lesser of two evils, into, into making these faux strategic um, votes that, you know, oh, when Joe Biden is elected, we can lobby him further to the left, which has never been the case. That has never been something that we can do. But fine, if that is your reasoning, then that is your reasoning. Let's talk about what you're going to do in order to do that. Uh, and I address this in, a, in a, another video. I'm going to continue supporting grassroots efforts. I'm going to continue supporting people that are advocating for a systemic change. And I'm going to work ground up rather than top down because I don't think top down is really going to work. Not saying that that's not something that people should vie for. It is. It's a strategy that, can be, that you can utilize. I just don't. I'm, for me, it's just not the most effective strategy. But. Throughout this last couple months, I mean, it has just been a constant fight of if you don't vote for Joe Biden, you're voting for Nazis. And it's like, no, Joe Biden is a crypto fascist. That's what the Democratic Party and the establishment are. They're, they're crypto fascists. And, you know, I've had people come out of the woodwork to attack me. They don't come out of the woodwork to support me. They come out of the woodwork to attack me. But again, that's sort of the programming of social media. And this constant battle and this constant conversation we have over the election and how we need to keep the two-party system in place, even though the two-party system is the reason why we have a lot of the problems that we have, um, it's been exhausting. So I'm ready for this election to be done, you know, and, and I know we have, what, a week and a half to go, 
and it's going to be an exhausting week and a half of dealing with this shit, of dealing with just news about the election, getting text message after text message and calls after calls. Oh, Michelle Obama is telling you she need you need to vote for Joe Biden. Fuck off. You know, I'm just over it. I'm exhausted from it. Um, this is not. I, it, this is different than I think political fatigue. This is just this is just election fatigue, and part of it is because we put so much emphasis on the election, right? Vote. It's the most important thing you can do. No, 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 no. It's a thing you can do, but supporting mutual aid, supporting your community, uh, you know, being on the ground floor and changing just the way you live your life a little bit to be more about. Uh, cooperative community-based initiatives and cooperative community-based goals on a community level, on this small level, will start working its way up. Supporting worker movements, labor movements, amplifying things about general strikes... Joe Biden ain't gonna do shit. We just had another kid, we just had another black guy who had a mental health problem get shot down in fucking Philly. And what does corporate media talk about? They talk about fucking, oh, the violent protesters. Yes, there's calls for peace. And uh, sure, I believe in, I absolutely believe in peaceful protesting. But what are you gonna do? Like, how much. How much patience do you really expect people to have when they're being kettled, rubber bulleted, attacked with chemical warfare? These people are throwing water bottles at cops to protect themselves because the cops are are just itching to fucking be the the strong arm. You know, they want to be the strong arm of the law and they want to throw a beat down. That's what they want to do. That's what they have they have um, been programmed to do. That's what their training is all about. That's what our, our media throws out about them. Joe Biden isn't going to change that. Joe Biden wants to put more funding into the police to train them. Why can't you do that with the funding they have now? Their funding now is being used to you know, give them more weapons. You can get rid of some of the techniques that they use and put like teach them other techniques. Maybe don't pay them as much and make them the only thing that you can call when you have a problem. This dead family in Philadelphia called an ambulance and the cops showed up. Why? But that's what I mean is I think there's too much emphasis on voting and electoral politics. So when you start talking about voting and electoral politics and who you're going to vote for and all this other stuff, there's so much pressure put on that that if you don't do the exact thing that somebody else is going to do, you your, your vote now means that everything that this other person's life is, right? Let's say it's person A is voting for Joe Biden and person B decides that they want to vote for the Green Party. Well, that person B is an affront to everything person A stands for because voting is the be-all, end-all of all political conversations and all activist conversations and everything civic that you can do, everything that you do to, to, to build a better country. No, it's a thing you can do and it's a rather small thing that you can do. It's literally the least that you can do. The Millville community hands out these produce boxes almost every week, right? Uh, And it's just people from the community. The mayor of Millville shows up, uh, and he's there handing out produce boxes uh, to families that need it, to to people that need it, that, that are, like, struggling and can't afford the food that they need to feed their homes. And that is far more effective than going to the ballot box and casting a vote for a Democrat that won't do shit. That's the community-driven efforts that I'm talking about. So, how are we going to come together and, you know, are we learning about our neighbors? Do you know your neighbors? Do you know who lives across the street or next to you? Do you talk to them every so often? Do you say, hello, how are you?
a fire truck that went by, so I wanted to make sure that it could get by. But, you know, that's that's part of the thing is the conversation about electoral politics has become so toxic that I, I legitimately believe that elections are the most toxic thing about the, this country right now. Who you voted for. I mean, I'm still going to not vote shame anybody, right? I, I talked to my sister about... Uh, about about this and she was like cool who'd you vote for oh cool i'm voting for this person here's my reason why that's cool i think we both share the same beliefs we just have a different way of implementing those beliefs within this very small thing that we can do do you support independent media do you only listen to cnn and msnbc or npr or fox news or the independent or what have you or do you listen to various different sources? Are you trying to understand different perspectives? And the people that don't, because and, and the people that don't want to understand other perspectives are the people that think that they are 100% right all the time. Without really knowing a lot of the information that, that uh, about their country. They don't know the history of their own country. Man, the election is, is burning me out. So that's part of the reason why, you know, I I just haven't wanted to talk about anything. Because the noise and the buzz is all about that shit. So I'm I'm waiting. I'm I'm honestly like it just it feels like I I just want to wait till it's over and then just do all the things and talk about all the things and hopefully I'll have, you know, a little bit of a setup figured out that I can do live streams like I used to do back I well, used to do back in March. I'm making it sound like it was 100 years ago now. The other thing is just this pandemic is I think it's finally gotten to that point where I'm just fucking exhausted. October used to be one of my favorite months to tour. I used to go to Michigan, Lansing, Michigan. Uh, I used to love going to Lansing, Michigan. Um, Kalamazoo, I used to go to Detroit. I would go to Detroit every October. Uh, usually D.C., Hanover was also a spot in October. I was going to have my birthday show at Hambones, and unfortunately Hambones is closed. And, uh, you know, I want to see my friends, but there are certain people that have just been irresponsible, and the numbers are going way up, and we can't afford to do that right now. Can't afford to be going to restaurants and fucking on a regular basis and doing all this shit. Like, it's just... That's where the that's where the rates have been high. Is from people going to restaurants and pretending like everything's back to normal. Um, they let their guard down, and I I mean I want everything to go back to normal as much as the next person, but fuck all, man. Like this is, it's gonna get really really bad before it gets any better. Like even if there is a vaccine, I I honestly don't like. If I put it in perspective of touring, I don't see myself getting back on the road until late spring of next year. And that's that's a a very optimistic estimate. That's an optimistic estimate. So with all that said, you know, I do have a good community of people around me that Um, can keep my spirits high, you know, and I have a, I have a good partner that, you know, is helping take care of all the things, you know, when I need, when I need help, I'm, I can, I can rely on this person, uh, which is not something I can say was with my last relationship. So, uh, it's weird, man. I'm still, I'm still kind of getting used to that notion of like, Oh, I can I can talk to you about things without uh, about things that bug me, and it's not a slight to you, and you're not going to get mad about it. That's pretty cool. That's a new and different thing, uh, you know. And creating the space that we both can live in is it's. I mean, it's a challenge, but I mean, there's stuff that we can do, like YouTube videos that we can watch. Uh, so I think I need to take the time. This is basically what it boils down to is there has been a lot going on all the time constantly 
Uh, and primarily what I did was focus on my virtual shows. And now there's even more going on and we have to kind of take things slower and go one thing at a time because I've hit that hit that threat, threat threshold of how much I can really do and how much I can really concentrate on. Um, part, that's part of my anxiety. That's part of the, the depression that I feel. And, and really the depression that I feel is coming from the fact that like I feel like I need to do more when in reality what I need to do is take things one thing at a time and, you know, check off the things uh, that I that I need to check off and then concentrate my efforts on, you know, certain things. Like once I get in the groove of this design job, I'll be able to figure out how to lock that into a schedule and then figure out, well, how do I do live streams, podcasts, and how do I do virtual shows? Do I go down to once a month for the virtual shows, right? Instead of... Um, I can write bigger shows, two to four part shows, maybe even bigger shows. I can uh, run it kind of as a stand-up showcase or run panel discussions uh, in a certain way. Um, I can implement some of the ideas that I have for Taboo Table Talk. And I can do this all one thing at a time rather than put everything into a, into the same box. The Like, I didn't stop. I pretty I mean I think I pretty much went full throttle when this pandemic hit. Partly but one because I thought it was only going to be 6 weeks so it took 2 months. Like I thought by the summertime we were going to be back out. Uh I I you know early May I was thinking I'll be back on the road by August. Uh by the end of May I realized I'm not going to be back on the road until next year. Um, and now I'm looking at things and I'm predicting late spring. I'm thinking I'm thinking April or May is really when, when things are going to be uh, um, quote unquote opening back up where we, where, where we don't have to constantly wear masks or be at 50% capacity where, where the uh, threat of being indoors uh, with a large group of people is not um, a risky thing to do. Um, yeah. And that's, I mean, I miss, I miss that. Like I said, man, this was, October was like one of my favorite months to be on the road. Cause that, cause the shows would just, they would just be fucking awesome venues and awesome cities. And like, I got to see and be with awesome people uh, and I'm, I fucking miss that shit. So I think that is added to it as well. But, you know, that's kind of the mental headspace that I'm in is every, it, it waxes and wanes every day. Like I, I had to do errands and it was, it took some doing, you know, like I had to get motivated, uh, to, to run out and run my, and it wasn't like complicated errands. I literally had to like fill up my tires. I had to go get gas and go pick up that produce box um, and, uh, and that was it. And I was just like, ah, this is fucking, there's so much, but you know, I'm, I'm getting back into the rhythm of exercising every day and trying to like get my head right. And I might write out a schedule. That's one of the things I list have, have seemed to help me out. So I might write out a schedule that I can, um, that I can use and tweak, uh, as things go along that will let me do all the things I want to do on a professional and personal level. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. And even that, like getting motivated to do that might take a, uh, like I said, it might take a little bit of, little bit of doing uh, here and there. But anyway, uh, I hope you guys are doing okay. I hope you guys are, are, are well out there. I mean, everything is at a heightened level of stress and everything is at this heightened level of pressure, you know, uh, because who, it's it's tougher to move now when the numbers are going up, just like it was tougher to, like, move when this initial pandemic started or, or the pandemic initially started. Um, you know, so it's like who you're around 
the quarantine that you surround yourself with is is the quarantine that you surround yourself with. So there becomes this initial pressure of like, we have to be this idealistic individual. And, you know, you don't. Um, you can be yourself and fuck up and apologize and figure things out. Uh, and hopefully your quarantine is, is a team you that, that you can depend on. Uh, so I hope you guys are doing well. I'm going to keep working on, you know, get myself back into... Uh, the motivated spirit of uh, getting back on my feet and producing content and doing live streams and um, and and you know back to talking about things that I think need to be talked about uh, from a historical context, from a activist content context, uh, all you know, all filtered through the lens of ranty comedy. So uh, yeah. I think that's it. That's all I got for you guys today. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you, uh, you know, um, like. Make sure you share this. Uh, if you're if you're not a fan of uh, uh, the YouTubes or the Facebooks and their censorshipy bullshit, then um, you know, look for my channel on Rockfin or go and subscribe to my email list. Uh, and, and all of that stuff is available on my website, which is krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, you guys are amazing. I really appreciate all the support and uh, the patience <laughs> that you guys uh, give to, to all this. Uh, it, it really means a lot. Uh, I don't like letting people down, don't like failing, and I don't, I don't like sitting idle or feeling this way. You know, it doesn't feel like myself. Um, and I think things have, think, things kind of hit that upper echelon. Of, they, they kind of peaked. Uh, and it's, it's that immediate, like, it peaks, it gets crazy, and then you just go, fuck it. You know, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to, like, I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm sloping down, and I'm trying to, like, loop back up. That's that's what I'm trying to do. It's tough, so I'm trying to give myself the time and trying to be patient with myself um, in regards to that. So, uh, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up here. Uh, that has been your uh, big road reflection. We'll see we'll see you soon. Bye.